I had a doctor's appointment this morning, as you do, after a long weekend we took the kids to Legoland at London and for a hillbilly like me that was a bit of an eye opener but I've got five sticks that I finished up and what I've got to do is just show you how I go about basically the finishing up of the stick uh, once I've finished oiling it and everything like that and the process for me then to take it on to sell to the customer so yeah stick with me it's um nothing too technical nothing too grand but it just gives you a clear idea of the the completion and the finishing uh part of my production and then onward to the customer right then let's go and have a look at these uh five that are drying and these are the ones i've got to do now and there they are They've been there for quite a while and they're fully dried but I will have to do an initial gentle wipe over to take any excess um, boiled linseed resin or, or leftover product off that um, actual um, hiking sticks. They will even though they feel uh, dry to the touch because like I said they've been there for a couple of days they do need cleaning up. Right, this one here has a pheasant on it, and so does this one. Obviously, um, a stripped back uh, model and a, a natural styled one where I just leave enough bark to do a wood burning. Now, what I'm going to do is clean those up and send photographs off to the customer to either confirm that they want it, or if they don't, not a big deal because these here they aren't named, they just have a um a bird of specific choice on them they'll probably end up online but um so i'm going to clean these up and start photographing them and sending off to the customer so he can choose which one he wants or if he wants any of them um i've done a peaked crown on this one and a flat top on that one just to add a little bit of choice Right, here's the two, and I'm going to just clean them up. As you can see, there's a pheasant there, right the way around. Just a plain one. Put that one there. Then I have this one, which I've done a bit of like a scene, really. A flying pheasant taking off, and one on the ground again. In a field of grass but what I'm going to do with a bit of uh, kitchen roll is very gently wipe off all the excess and now I'm holding the sticks I can actually feel there is some excess um, product on the stick the wood will uh, will only accept the amount of product that it can accept I mean you could continuously every five days put a new coat on but it will the wood will get to a point it will be saturated and it will not accept enough so I know that this stick has taken all the product that it can do into the wood and bark because obviously there's a little bit left on the outside And you can start to see there on that piece of um, kitchen towel that there's leftover product. So I'm going to continue doing this very gently. If you're doing a barked one, you must be very gentle how you pull back down over the bark. Because you can unwittingly pull fibres up so you get like almost like a, um, a very lumpy and bumpy effect as you've pulled some of the bark fibers back out of the wood so i'm being very careful i'm just going up through and this is quite a nice stick it's got a very very like almost dark dark chocolate uh, look about the bark it almost gives it almost like a a vintage kind of look on this stick but anyway i'm gonna put this one down and get a new piece of uh, kitchen roll because um, 
it's getting overloaded it's getting quite saturated now and it becomes pointless anything to do with boiled linseed as i've described before you must dispose of all the rags and uh, clean up properly after yourself it will uh, self-combust uh, boiled linseed so um, this here I'll take down to the fire pit and I'll shove it into the fire pit into the coals and uh, when I next light it up this will all go up and disappear and be in no danger of catching fire in bins or wherever I may have left it so I'm going to get some more of this in a moment Right, I'm doing the same to this stripped one, and this has got a real nice, I've just noticed how vibrant the colours are on this one. It's going from a real cream down into a honey coloured, and it goes right down into a real dark kind of like tan, possibly chestnut down here at the bottom. That's a really, that's come out a really nice piece of wood. I'm really, I'm really liking this one, and it's got some nice, um, track marks all the way down through if you have a look in the wood you see some nice little track marks that's not tool marks that's natural marks where there's been um either ingress of fungus into the living tree or there's been vines running up going into the actual bark looks really nice look at that on the handle you might just see it that looks really nice, almost like a marbled effect. But in any way, um, I'm giving this a good wipe off and uh, we'll move on to the next uh, task. Giving the copper tip a good clean because quite often a lot of the product will um, make its way down to the tip. Give it a good clean there right i think i'm happy with both of them now to move on to the next step right i've now got a junior hacksaw and the reason i'm not using a woodworking tool is quite simply i need to clean up a few little bits of wood if you can see that have just kind of as i've compressed the copper tube down over the wood it's just peeled back almost like a um, a plain wood as it cuts just that final little bit into the wood it's just peeling it back all I'm going to do is take this hacksaw here and very gently place along it here and just pull back I'm going to do this outside because I don't want any contaminated wood in here but like I said all it is basically I'm going to work my way around keeping it square like this as I go around the piece of copper not trying to cut into the copper just to take any wood little um, splinters or fibers and just cut them off the reason I'm using a junior hacksaw is quite simply a woodworking tool you dull it out um, if you're going up against the copper copper is soft but it will still trash any woodworking tools so I'm going to go outside and just do that just take this off like that and uh, I'll come back in then Right then, once I've trimmed that up and got it how I want it, next step is to get a metal file. Metal yet again, because you will be rubbing up against copper, but it will take wood off as well. And all I've done is just give it a bit of a quick clean up there. So it just makes it a bit more presentable. As I stated in my other videos, um, there's no sealed end because when you're using it you hammer and compress that wood and it will become as hard as steel by the time all the um, road uh, debris and, and muck and mess gets impregnated in the wood as well and it's hammered and hammered and hammered and it swells inside that copper tube to the point that um, it, it won't accept water won't travel so far up the fibers have been compressed and hammered to the point they become like steel inside that tube but um now i've got to clean the copper bit because obviously i've got a bit of um, residue from the boiled linseed down over the copper so i've just got some steel wool fine steel wool and uh basically i'm just polishing it up and i'm going to get it to the point it's nice and shiny 
everybody it just looks that little bit more professional if you've polished it up to the point it's kind of got that shiny look to it you look at it and go whoa that's really it just makes it it's like that finishing touch it just makes it look whoa stands out so there you go i've polished polished that up to the point it's absolutely you know a bit of light on it Poor, it pops right out it's it's glaring back at you so that's looking very nice as you can see there so i'm going to move on and do the other one and then we'll go and sort the lanyard out now all my models will come with one variant of this um, cordage i've got a brown and i've got a silver gray i've got a khaki green color but i also do have a heavier gauge one in the car key um that's 10 millimeter and the rest of my stuff is eight millimeter which is sufficient but um for my heavier gauge hiking sticks i do prefer to use the 10 millimeter just as you can see i put my hand in it you can see it's got a very good a very good um broad broad sort of like coverage on the hand so there's no strain although the 10 millimeter as you can see is still quite it, it offers a lot of comfort when you're holding your lanyard like that you can see it's not small where it's going to bite in and leave those horrible red marks you can get and because it's not leather it doesn't soak water up crack become stiff brittle and um you know to be honest with you leather does if it's not kept in good condition does get quite uncomfortable to use and it'll bite into the skin um also this has a good bushcraft um use you use it for cordage and help you to tie up your tarps or tents or what have you but also it's good for fire starting if you get this going this will stay burning for quite some while so yeah it has a, it has a multi multi-use for me not just as a lanyard but that's my colorations differences and obviously size differences i have there right i've decided to go with the silver gray for the darker of the sticks just to help make that bark pop out and stand out even more and i do have an already predetermined measurement that I've worked out which is best or generic I can increase it if somebody wants a bit more of a custom uh, you know length of uh, lanyard all I'm doing is snipping it this is also water resistant it doesn't rot and it doesn't hold water like leather or any other like uh, material it's you know it is man-made like I said it will catch fire but um, yeah uh, it's it's a good solid outdoor material right so i'm going to do light gray on one and i think i'll go with the traditional brown on the other one so i just cut these then we are seal the ends off these are just going to have standard length lanyards there that's done so we got that one and the gray one and i'm just going to seal the ends and that all that involves is a lighter and just sealing the ends over and trying not to catch it on fire do that again all you're doing is sealing the fibers and don't breathe in the smoke because it's toxic there all i've done is basically sealed it as you can see there well i'll do the same to this one now right then let's put a lanyard in this one we said we were going to go with the gray one in this and you'll see that it'll, it because it's light it'll make that bark pop right out there you go right get it equal lengths yeah. i'm just grabbing both pieces there and i'm simply just doing a very simple knot making sure i don't cross over the individual uh bits of rope and it was self and it was self tighten you can release it and move it up and down to give you whatever you know whatever kind of grip you want 
I mean, if you're going to hold it like that, you might want to be a bit further up. That might be too loose. You'd um, you know, just take it up. Or if you've got big hands, you might just want to grab it like that. But yeah, that's pretty much it for the lanyard. And that's pretty much done now. So yeah, we're getting pretty much there. So there, that's the uh, completed item. As you can see, it's looking very nice. But it's no good to me looking very nice in the workshop. I have to get this to the customer. And before I do that, if it's a custom order or something they've asked, um, you know, could I send pictures of? Um, I've got to do that. And there's multiple platforms you can do that with. And I'm not going to recommend any particular platform. Um, because quite simply, whatever platform I've used, I've run into problems, uh, pluses, negatives. Um, you know, I've had good results and I've had bad results using various platforms. But whatever platform you choose, um, you, you will have to take into consideration that taking a picture of a hiking stick is... It's quite difficult to actually give it the full context of the stick. Quite often, if you get the full length, you're too far back. So you make the stick look smaller like in, in girth. And uh, also you cut out some of the features, which might be what you've left in to shape. When you shaped the stick, you've left in to give it that wow factor. But uh, in any case, um, I'll quickly just show you where I do it. I'm not going to give you any photography lessons because believe you me, there's better people out there than me and I only do it with a phone as you'll see. So this is the area I use for the photographs quite simply because if I put the sticks against the door, the dark of the door makes the sticks actually pop out. And you can see the various colours. And I've got light coming from two windows. One in the hallway and one in the kitchen here. A big one. So that's pretty much where I do my photographing of the hiking sticks. Right. I've got the same phone, phone as my wife. And they're just cheap models. Samsons. But it seems to do everything I want to do. All I do... is basically take various angles like this. It's a, it's a pain in the ass, but it's what you've got to do. And I'll try and get the best photos I can. Various angles. And on top of that, come back and get like this. try and get the actual pheasant and take the back side of the actual stick So you can get the rough idea of what I'm doing there. I'll quickly show you what the photos look like. And these are the, the photos I will send to the customer, as you can see. And you can get a rough idea. There's enough clarity for the customer to see what the stick's about and what they're getting. And, um, yeah. And they're good enough quality to represent what the stick has to offer. So yeah, I've never really shown the full end game before it goes on to the customer. I haven't shown you me taking it to the, the courier shop and wrapping it. You've seen that on uh, some of the other videos and that's me having to drive to the couriers. I try to do it uh, when I've got a batch of, you know, two or three sticks to go at the same time. And it makes it a like, little bit more economic. But... That's essentially the end game once I've completed the stick and uh, the finishing product is there or boiled linseed. If it's, if it's polyurethane, it's a slightly different process because I may have to do a little bit of fine touch up sanding and then give it a quick little touch up 
which adds another day for that to dry in itself. So polyurethane can be a little bit more drawn out, but that's boiled linseed. And as you've seen, that's how I go about my finishing up and demonstrating or showing it to the customer to confirm they're happy. I've not really had a case where I've sent photos off and somebody said, no, they really do not want it. Um, so, you know, I've been quite blessed with that. But as you can see, that's how I go about it. And um, I hope that was a, a little bit of an insight. If you've had a stick from me, thinking about having a stick from me, or indeed, if you're uh, at that point, you're making a few sticks to pass on to customers, uh, you'll probably be doing the same as what I've done there. So, uh, yeah, thanks for coming along. Bit of a random one, but... It is essentially, uh, you know, part of the hiking stick making as a hiking stick maker. You have to do this very laborious bit at the end to get the stick to the point it's ready for the customer. Um, so, yeah, um, take care, stay safe and I hope to catch you guys on the trail.